matter how rough it gets, no matter how boisterous it gets, the anchor still holds. <laughs> Amen. The Lord still holds. Amen. I'm thankful for that tonight, aren't you? Hallelujah. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with me if you would, if you wouldn't mind standing for the word of the Lord, to Nehemiah chapter 4. And just as you're finding that, of course, this is Pastor Appreciation Day for Brother and Sister Trail. And uh, thank you for honoring them wonderfully this morning. And uh, Pastor Appreciation's not about one service. <laughs> no, it's not even about one month. <laughs> it's about uh, the honoring and respecting of the one who stands in the gap for your soul. The Bible says that we are going to give an account. We're going to give an account for your soul. The Bible says that there is somebody that stands between the porch and the altar, weeping. Spare the people, Lord. Spare the people. And that's your pastor. You'll never, ever go wrong lifting up and honoring and respecting your pastor. That doesn't mean we're always right, but God has placed us in a position to make sure that we are accountable for your soul. And that's an incredible, incredible responsibility. Amen. Thank you for honoring them and continue to do that. And uh, God will bless you. He will. Amen. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 1, it says, But it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we built the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren, the army of Samaria, and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. This is the story of Nehemiah and his desire to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And tonight I'd like to speak to you for a little bit, a few moments, on a cause to live. Why are you alive? A cause to live. God, I thank you for your mighty presence and your mighty spirit. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost and the anointing that has just arrived. I thank you, Lord, for that powerful moving of your spirit right now. I thank you for the anointing of your word. And God, I pray you captivate our minds and our hearts uh, to receive, God, from your word tonight exactly what you desire, God, for the remainder of this service. And I ask it in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen. And you may be seated. Tonight I'm going to speak to you just for a little bit on the cause to live. First of all... Um, this, this message is based upon revival. It's based upon being revived. It's based upon uh, this process that you see in this passage. Nehemiah desires to build the wall, and he has three people that are, are really, um, they, don't, they don't think it's going to be accomplished. Sam Ballot, you see Tobiah, Geshem. They don't, they, they don't have a lot of hope that they actually are, saying a lot of negative things about what Nehemiah is going to do. If you look at the word revive, it is the translation of the word chawa, which means to live or cause to live. If you look throughout those scripture, you'll see that the word revived is used in different aspects within the scripture. Number one, it's used as or of the restoration of life. You can find that in Genesis 45 and Judges 15. 
It's also used in the example of rebuilding, and that's the example that we're using tonight. It's also used in the restoration of the well-being of a person when they are quickened. Something happens in their life and they are quickened. One uh, occurrence in the New Testament, the word revive, it basically comes from a word anasio, which means to live again. And it's based upon when Christ died and rose from the dead. Christ died and lived again or was revived. And so when we speak about revival or the word revive, it has some, some uh, context to our lives in the case of us uh, being restored to life, having, uh, having passed away and being restored, or uh, in the rebuilding uh, of a person's life, or in this case, the walls, or in the case of our well-being being quickened and we're brought back to a renewal of, of God's presence and spirit in our life as it once was. That's why Paul said, stir up the gift that is within you. There's, there's, it's there. And he says, stir it up. Revival is a renewed conviction of sin and repentance, followed by an intense desire to live to or in the obedience of God. It's giving up one's will in a humility of wanting something greater than what it is right now. Revival is not just evangelism. It's not just an excitement. It's not just emotionalism. It's an extraordinary movement uh, of the Holy Ghost uh, in a person's life. Revival, no matter how great or small in its ultimate scope, uh, always begins with an individual believer whose heart is desperate for God and is willing to pay the price uh, to do whatever has to be done uh, to have something change in their life. Listen, God wants to advert judgment. He's simply looking for a person, one person who will pay the price in prayer, in faith, in commitment uh, to whatever it takes uh, to get a hold of God and not let go. That's what God's looking for. Revival is the moving of God's spirit through the power of his word to the hearts of his children that resurrects to new life areas that have been lying stagnant and dormant or stale or out of balance and it results in a new love for the obedience of serving God. That's why he says in the the book of Revelation they have left or lost their first love. They need it to be revived. When Paul uses in 2 Timothy 1 and 6, uh, that word revive is the same word when he says, stir up the gift uh, that is in you. That means stir it into a flame. Get it on fire. You know, the use of the word revive when he's speaking to Timothy We must take notice that he's not speaking to a church. He's not speaking to a large group of people. He's speaking to one individual. He's speaking to Timothy. We pray for revival. We we want revival. We desire revival. And Paul's instruction was only to Timothy. Timothy, if you'll stir what's inside of you, that'll set someone else on fire. You won't have to worry about it. You get revived, Timothy, and that will that will set someone else aflame. When you look at this story in the book of Nehemiah, you you have uh, the army of Samaria, and, and the governor is Sanballat, and he's commanding his army, and he he's he's trying to excite the soldiers that the views of Nehemiah are, are ridiculous. They're just they're way out there, and so he asks some questions. Number one, he says, "What do these feeble Jews? What do these feeble Jews?" That mentality is the despising of the workman. 
Oh, they're just a small group. Or they're just uh, in a small community. They're, 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 don't worry about them. They're, they're, it'll fade away. Uh, yeah, don't worry about them. It, it'll pass. Uh, uh, you hear, what do these feeble Jews? They, they don't have this and they don't have that. And they're not up to date with this and they're not up to date with that. Oh, you'll get all kinds of people that will make all kinds of comments. Uh, but God's just looking for some person, one person that has a cause to live uh, and says, God, uh, I want to be revived. And when that desire and that desperation arises in a person, God hears the cry. What do these feeble Jews? Second question is, it says, will they fortify themselves? The endeavor of Sanballat was to turn everything into ridicule. Will they fortify themselves? That's a a ridicule mentality. And that still happens today. Oh, nobody, nobody's hungry. Nobody desires uh, people, people come and they go. You hear it. You'll hear it from uh, someone's on fire for God. You, you, oh, just give them a little bit of time. They'll calm down. Don't worry about it. Uh, it won't be long, and, and, and they'll fall back into the same trap they once were. That's the ridicule of will they fortify themselves? Uh, are they really going to last? We'll find out. Those thoughts are still being said said today. People aren't hungry. People People are too concerned, caught up. Let me tell you, there's people crying out right now for help. Oh, God, if there is a God, if there is somebody, would you put them in my pathway? There's people crying out right now. If there is a God, would you hear my my prayer, my cry? Oh, don't worry about the ridicule. Will they fortify themselves? There is going to be an incredible gathering of people. Just eight weeks ago, brother, if you could put up that first picture just eight weeks ago this is our guest card and uh, it's got a homely picture on the front but besides that it's got information that fell out on the back and um, this lady came into our church eight weeks ago filled out this this guest card her name's Lisa Cromwell Lisa Cromwell. See, on the bottom of our guest card, it's got first-time guest, new in the community, member of another church, returning guest, and then there's a little, there's a little break there before it says, would you like to have information on a free home Bible study? And Lisa decided that she was going to put her own little dash and write in her own little statement. And if you can't see it, I'll read it to you. Lisa wrote in, backslider, coming home. That's what Lisa wrote in. The second picture, brother. It was only two weeks later. And Lisa was standing in the altar as people stood around her and prayed that God would touch her. You have to realize Lisa's been out of the church uh, for 30 years. 30 years. uh, And it was only within seconds, the next picture, only within seconds, uh, God slayed her out uh, and refilled her with the baptism of the Holy Ghost uh, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues uh, as the Spirit gives uh, the utterance. Uh, Let me tell you, there's still people that are hungry uh, for an almighty God. I don't know if people know her, but she's Brother Cromwell's sister from Mactamy and been out of the church for 30 years. Oh, the the naysayers may say they can't come back or they're not hungry or they don't desire it. 
But I'm here to tell you all it takes is one person with a desire that says, I want to be revived. Uh, and something happens uh, inside of them. All oh, 30 years of being away from God was not too long for God to refill her with the Holy Ghost. Uh, hallelujah. And let a fresh anointing of God's presence sweep over her life. Uh, and already since then, she's brought three people to church. Let me tell you, there's people that are hungry for God. It's a cause to live. The same week, we had had a deaf conference at our church in August, and uh, that's an interesting conference if you've ever been to one. And we had a number of deaf people come, and there was a deaf person that was in the hospital. He had never come to our church. I never met him before, but Brother Miller, Chris Miller, was married to Brother Grado's daughter from Halifax. He was at the deaf conference. Him and his wife are both deaf, and he went to visit this man in the hospital and taught him a Bible study in sign language. And uh, a week or two later, he came up from Halifax and taught him another Bible study. And he wanted to be baptized so bad. He wanted to be baptized. So I went into the hospital. And uh, my wife and I had taken about 10 weeks or so of sign language enough to, to learn how to communicate a little bit with the deaf. It's an incredible, it's an incredible thing. And uh, so we were able to communicate with him a little bit. And he wanted to be baptized that day. And he's been in the hospital. He hadn't walked in, in five weeks. And uh, his health was not good. And we knew we had to get him baptized. And so I went out to the nurse's station. And, and I said, Gerald wants to be baptized. And I'm trying to figure out if there's a place in the hospital here that Gerald can be baptized. And the nurse said, oh, no, that's impossible. That's impossible. That ain't going to happen. That's not going to take place. So I just waited for her to walk away. I stood at the desk and waited for another nurse. And the next nurse came along. And she said, oh, yes, we can make that happen. That's exactly who I want to talk to right there. We can make that happen. No problem. Call back on Monday and we'll make arrangements. And so I called back on Monday. And arrangements were being made. Called back on Tuesday to confirm and. And the head nurse said, you know, she said, he can leave the hospital just on a pass and you can bring him back. Oh, hallelujah. We, we rented the disability bus and picked him up. He had to be in a wheelchair, of course. And we drove him. He, he was driven to the church. And, and uh, I made sure there were six guys there. And we laid a sheet down on the floor, picked him up out of the chair and laid him on the sheet. And six men lifted him up and lowered him down into the baptismal tank. Hallelujah. And baptized him in the name of Jesus uh, for the remission of his sins. Uh, let me tell you, there's still people that are hungry for God. We lifted him back out with the sheet and laid him down on the floor. Changed the Johnny shirt, put him back in the, in the wheelchair and put him back in the van and took him back to the hospital. And... Uh, my assistant and I were standing outside while they were getting them all ready. I could hear them talking in there. It was kind of comical. They said, yeah, they took him out and took him all the way out to the church and baptized him. Took him to the church. Yeah, took him to the church. And they named uh, another church, St. Mark's, and which is our church is on Mark Drive. It's not the same church. He wouldn't have got that wet at St. Mark's. And uh, interestingly enough, that night, he sent through a text. And he sent a text to a lady in the church. And in the text it said, Therapist was absolutely shocked today when I walked for the first time in five weeks. 
Hallelujah. Let me tell you, the power of God is still the same. Uh, don't worry about what the naysayers say. Will they fortify themselves? Uh, God's still on the throne. Uh, he's still got a group of people, uh, hallelujah, that are wanting to be revived. <laughs> We're just waiting for Gerald to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's only a short few months ago we had baptized another deaf lady, and she was received the Holy Ghost in the tank with this, with speaking with tongues. What a powerful experience to see a deaf person speaking in another tongue. Hallelujah, as the Spirit gives the utterance. Uh, let me tell you, there's still people, hallelujah, that give you a cause to live. Yeah. Uh, hallelujah. You know what? Some people will even recourse to lying to try to stop you. Look, what's, look what they said. If a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. Well, it's interesting to know that the wall that was rebuilt was two and a half miles long. It was 12 feet high and 16 feet wide. Now that is a mighty big fox that's going to break down a two and a half mile wall 12 feet high 16 feet wide let me tell you the enemy he will even recourse to lying he will actually try to convince people that you can't do it you can't witness you, you, you've got too many wrongs in your life. God's not going to use you. Uh, you've got too big a past. He, he's not going to use you. Uh, there's nobody in your family that's hungry. They, they don't think anything positive about you being a Christian. Let me tell you, those are lies uh, of the enemy. God put his spirit inside of you. Uh, hallelujah. And that spirit is the same spirit that raised him from the dead. Uh, hallelujah. You have all power necessary uh, for a reason to live live <laughs> yeah don't allow the enemy to lie to you about a fox breaking down the wall no. sometimes even deceitful speeches will be used if you look at nehemiah chapter 6 verse 2 it says that Sanballat and Geshem sent out unto me, speaking to Nehemiah, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of oh no. <laughs> you don't want to go to the plain of oh no. This is what it says. But they thought to do me mischief. Nehemiah figured it out. They weren't on his side. They weren't excited about him rebuilding the wall. They just wanted to do something to cause him mischief. Don't allow yourself to go to the plane of oh no. That's not where you want to end up when it comes to being revived. Hallelujah. Revival, if it depended on you and me, your prayer, your faith, your obedience, what would our church really look like? See, revival is when God even gets sick and tired of the status quo. He sees so many people. That's why he responded and said, It's not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. He said, I came to seek and to save that which was lost. Revival is not a discovery of some new truth. It's a rediscovery of the grand truth, the truth. It's a rediscovery of God's power, the power of his blood, the power of the cross, the power of his name, the power of the word. It's not some rediscovery of a new recipe. Revival starts in one person who says, I've got a cause to live. I want you to notice the last question that they said. It says, will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? Will they revive the stones? 
Well, I'm glad to tell you that Peter said that ye are lively stones. You're not just burn over. You're not just out of the rubbish, part of the rubbish of no value. No, you've got a cause to live. You've got a cause. And so Nehemiah realized that, listen, this is bigger than me. This is more worthy than me. This is more powerful than me. And so all of a sudden, if you look at chapter 4, that's, that's, the, that's not the beginning. You have to go back to chapter 2. And the king, Art, or Artar, Arta Yerxes, however you want to say it, he sees Nehemiah and he says, I see that your countenance is sad, but yet you're not sick. You seem to be sorrowful, but yet you're not sick. What's wrong, Nehemiah? Well, king, I'm, I'm disappointed that the walls are down. See, I, I've, I've got a great heritage. There's something that I want to do. And I, I, I want to gather some people together and, and we want to rebuild the walls. And, and I, I know that there's going to be naysayers and there's going to be ones that won't tell the truth. And there'll be even people who try to do mischief about it all. But I believe that if I get myself together, we can do this. And let me tell you, 52 days later, two and a half miles, 12 feet high, 16 feet wide was rebuilt. Because one man said... I believe we can revive the stones out of the rubbish. <laughs> yeah. Well, that would be that would be wonderful if it was only there. But it actually goes back one more chapter to chapter one. In chapter one, Nehemiah gets himself into a prayer time with God. And he gets into an old-fashioned time of repentance. You can read the whole chapter. And Nehemiah has a good time of just getting before God and finding out what his cause was to live. There, there's a lot of things that are happening today, and I'm not against these things. Education's wonderful. Having a good career is wonderful. I'm not against any of those things. Doing well and being prosperous. There's nothing wrong with that. Eating well so you have good health. That's a good idea. I'm do, I don't do very well at it. <laughs> but that's a good idea. There's nothing wrong with going for a good walk and a good hike and maybe doing a few stairs. Wonderful. Excellent. Doing well at your job. Putting a great effort into your yard that it looks good. Making sure it's all tidy and looks like Brother Trails. Nothing wrong with all of that. That's, that's good. And all those things are wonderful. And uh, making sure you put in a good week's work and a good amount of hours and Get your rest and take your vitamins. All that stuff's good. But I'm talking about you being revived through a good old-fashioned time of repentance before God that says, I have a cause to live. I don't know if you realize what's happening in the world, but right now, even as we speak, all kinds of things are happening to line us up with the coming of Jesus Christ. And it has to be that it's more than just getting through a week at work uh, and surviving another month uh, and making sure our bills are paid at the end. Uh, it's got to be more than that, folks. Uh, it's got to be about a Lisa Cromwell and it's got to be about a Gerald Freeze that are, have a hunger for God uh, that someone will say, I've got a cause to live uh, and I've got to reach out uh, and find somebody. Oh, God, revive me uh, in tame out that somebody that's hungry for you that you would put me in their pathway you would put me God into an opportunity to just tell them about you 
a Nehemiah that's just tired of the walls being down that says, I believe that these stones can be revived. Huh. Well, can they revive the stones? Can they cause those stones to live? That's what that word revive means, a cause to live. Can they cause those burnt over stones to live? And Nehemiah said, yeah, we can do it. And within 52 days, they rebuilt that wall. I don't know when God's coming, but I know it's soon. It's, he's coming soon. And we don't have a lot of time. And there's billions of people around the world that don't know the Lord. And we must take one at a time in our community and ask God to give us the wisdom necessary. But that will start with an individual that says, I want to be revived. Hmm. Let's stand. Preacher, what is, what is it that I have to do? Well, I don't think it's ever wrong to follow the guidelines that Nehemiah gave to us. Nehemiah gave us a guideline. God, we need an old-fashioned time of repentance where you just affect our lives like you affected our life when we first come to you. What about the zeal and the enthusiasm and the excitement of when you came to Jesus? That very first time you gave your heart to God. What about that excitement and that zeal that was within you? Oh, there you may not have known everything necessary, but you had an excitement to tell someone about the Lord. You had an excitement to invite someone to church. You had an, an excitement to pray with someone no matter where they were. You had a zeal in your life because you were on fire for God. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know how long it is before the Lord comes, but I know he's coming soon, and it's time for the church to rise to the challenge and follow. God, I'm going to give my life, rededicate my life, recommit my life to you in a time of repentance. And God, I'm going to forget about the ones, Lord, that just that want to ridicule and they want to be naysayers and, and God they may not even want to tell the truth they may be up to mischief I'm going to push that stuff to the side uh, and put my focus on God what you really want me to do for you uh, and what you really want me to become because I know there are people that are still hungry for God hmm. sometimes I wonder if we've become desensitized that every person that you meet that does not know the Lord, they're actually lost. I live in a city of about 120,000 from end to end. And I wonder if, if we can go through our day at times not realizing that person after person after person that we come in contact with may not know the Lord. Oh, God, help me to be revived with a cause to live. Hallelujah. I'm looking for a group of people tonight at Tamel on a Sunday night in October at Pastor Appreciation Day that just, just wants to have the same idea as Nehemiah. And there's a sadness in your spirit because you have lost family members and maybe lost children. Maybe you lost spouse or aunts and uncles or mom and dad. There's a sadness in your spirit because maybe someone's been away from the Lord for maybe months or a number of years. I've come to bring you great hope. I've come to give you a reassurance tonight that if you allow your life to be revived, you just never know what God's going to do through your life in rebuilding someone else, quickening someone else, uh, allowing God to work through your life.
I'm looking for a group of people that will step out and come to this altar tonight that have a desire to be revived in themselves. Uh, hallelujah. Worrying about yourself at this present time. Uh, and that God would revive me. God would revive you. Uh, because there's all kinds of people around you that you just want to see saved. Uh, you want to see refilled. Uh, you want to see uh, come back to God. Uh, someone else that says, I'm just coming home. Uh, maybe there's a group of people tonight night that has a family member that's out of the church hallelujah the day and the hour it's now it's now oh god stir us stir up the gift that is within us god there's a cause to live tonight and that cause is to be revived in you would you call out to God on your behalf tonight? Would you call out to him, oh God, I want to be on fire for you. I want to be revived in you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Don't let someone tell you that you've been away too long. Don't let someone tell you that you've done too many errors. Don't let someone tell you that you've made too many mistakes. The Lord wants to revive your spirit tonight. The Lord wants to revive you. Hallelujah. Don't allow, don't allow flesh and don't allow pride and don't allow a self-consciousness to just say, you know what, I'm just going to pass it off on another service another night. No, let God revive you tonight. You have have no idea what tomorrow brings. Hallelujah. God is maybe desiring to put someone in your pathway tomorrow. If he should tarry, uh, that would see your life on fire for him. Uh, that would just desire to have what you have. A cause to live. A cause to live. Hallelujah, Jesus.